This is Mega Net Gaming Azure on Call series episode two. We're doing the Insatiable Eater Jaw as well as Sir Bellas for the Augmentation Gym. We actually go get two Augmentation Gyms in the end. So, who are the Eaters? We'll pull up the article on azron.fandom.com, a wiki there. Eaters are the trained war dogs of the Viamontian army and readily defend their masters to the death. Eaters will swallow most anything, including odd sword or penguin. They actually got some weird trophies from them that aren't worth a whole lot of experience, but they're kind of neat anyway. So, they're there to protect the King Verici's kingdom. And who is Cerebellus? The Viamontian Knight that is introduced in the Throne of Destiny expansion. He drops in numerous augmentation gems. He's level 750, has 3.5 million XP, no weakness to lightning. And we'll, if you try to debuff him, he'll cast counter spells against that. So. Anyways, we're not going to do the whole running of the Augmentation Realm. What most people do is they'll just find somebody with the portals to each place. Which is the, obviously the easiest way to do it. However, I will give the coordinates for each. So if you're wanting to get to the Insatiable Eater dungeon, you'll have to go to Actually, first, there's a lot of trophies that are dropped by the Insatiable Eater. You have the Insatiable Eater Jaw, the Upper Jaw, Ancient Falcat Trinket, which you can use to get, can use for buying a house. It's also the Luvian Leg, Garudinim Arm, Half Digested Brandy Mask, Identification Plate, Penguin Wing, Rusty Luigian Axe, Shell Brain, and Viamontian Torso. So the last of those, you get some amount of experience for those. So, and then what's next? Oh yeah, you need to get the coordinates for there. So where do you actually get this? You need to go to a certain dungeon. And that dungeon is at pull that up really quick. It is here actually to run there you'd probably start at West Watcher. Actually probably the one of the northern cities on the island. But the coordinates are 97.6 north, 48 west. So you might start at, I guess you could probably start at east watch for that. Could be wrong. Just, the best thing to do is just look it up. Most people ask for a portal. If anybody needs a portal there, just, just let me know and I'll give you a portal to each of these places. Now, Sir Bella's, the augmentation realm, it's on the top of them. Mountain. Where you'll go from the outpost to get there. And what is the coordinates? The thing about portals, is you can get a portal to the very final section of this dungeon from people. But if you're going to run there, the coordinates are 95 north, 47.1 west near. East watch. Anyways, we're going to go to the 97.448 west. I already have the portal. It is a hot drop typically. It does vary depending on the server. We'll go ahead and run in. Now, eaters do hit fairly hard even at a high level. And if you're at level, the level minimum to get in here, I'd make sure you have. 
have appropriate buffs. Try to have some majors and minors to help with defense and attacking. Go ahead and jump down. Get my both my dual strike slash daggers ready. We'll just go ahead and run through. Just jump straight out. Run straight from the drop. Go into this room. Now you're going to go around the corner. And when you see the corner, you'll see a way to run down. Don't go there. Turn left. And then just hug the right wall for a little while. Keep going down. And you'll get to this room where you need to jump down. This is a very hot drop down here. You'll see quite a few eaters. I don't think it really matters which direction you run. Just jump down. Run down the first place you see. Go around. Keep running. Keep going straight. You'll end up in this room. You either want to go all the way to the left or all the way to the right. You'll go into another room like this. Go ahead and jump down. And you'll need to run around here to find the specific eaters you need. Let's go ahead and kill a couple of these to get them out of the way so we can go ahead and go ahead and get the jaw. Try to work off the 2% by tape penalty I have. Oh look, we got a got a prodigal sprint. Rare. And add that to the mule and like we never use it, but at least I have it. Perhaps I'll use it to run super fast from one place to another in a future video. Pretty sure I already have a couple of those rares already. So anyway, let's see what's on these corpses. Anything useful? Nope. Not sure what tier these drops are here, but they're not terribly good. I might be able to find a decent amount of salvage though. The Falcon Trinkets and Salvage are fairly decent at this dungeon. We'll run around until we see the portal. When we see the portal, we'll run all the way to the left into this little side room. I want to kill this one. This one will drop the jaw we need. At yeah, level 275, it's not all that difficult. Go ahead and pick up both jaws. One is going to let you... One will flag you for the Augmentation Realm. The other one will give you about 50 million XP, I believe, and two MMDs. Which are worth essentially nothing at this point, given the flooding of the market. Alright. Looks like I don't have my armor buffed, but the epics are in effect. This guy took longer than expected. Go ahead and clear out this room so I can go ahead and portal out. Yeah, this was designed to be a, a group quest. You have 20 blank augmentation gems that are dropped by Sir Bellas on a six day pickup timer. So every six days I log in and get all, all four of my characters that are above level 130 together. And I go ahead and get the gems. Now this character right here, I think has about half of the augmentation gems. There are quite the variety of gems as well. We'll go over that later. So. What you'll end up doing is you'll give the blank augmentation gem to a trainer. They'll give you some type of augmentation, obviously.
So we're back here. Got chicken eggs a second. This on chicken egg the first level 247, the light weapons user. I forget what else he does. I think he does, he does alchemy and magic item tinkering, I believe. We'll just leave him there. He'll do this tomorrow. So we need to head back to the town network. And we're going to go to the Fiona outpost. Might be mispronouncing that. But we're going to go there to flag for the dungeon. Then you go to the annex section, which you can tell is the annex based on the being the only one that has two rooms off to the side before you run in. One for the marketplace. One for the facility hub. Some features to help make the game easier for new people. This game's definitely changed since when I played back in the day. We had to run from town to town. There's a lot of... You had to know the which portals. Which towns had which portals. And you go through a portal network. Now, if you're in Raylan, is the one you want to give the gem to. When you... After the drop from the town network, you just want to run to the... Run to the west. He's right there. So he says a bunch of stuff. Flags. It'll flag you for the Sir Bella's quest. For the augmentation gem. Now if you're doing this quest as a group, everybody needs to get an eater jaw. Everybody needs to get the, the lower jaw, that is. It's just called insatiable eater jaw. And everybody needs to flag, or else it will let you enter the portal. So. I was considering actually running there, but I had to give the coordinates earlier if you'd like to do the run. Feel free to. However, there are a lot of some nasty creatures out here if you're a lower level. Nothing that a a max level character with half the augs and an epic suit can't handle with these though. So we're going back to Allegiance hometown to see who has the portal. See there's chicken egg two, the son of chicken egg one. Or Megasaurus that has the portal we need. So. We'll see in one moment. And finally. Finally brings me back to the Legion's hometown. Now I am recording this after the fact. The audio didn't record for some reason when I made the video initially. I believe at this point I actually all tabbed out to talk about something else. But. We'll discuss the augmentation gems. You can go to the Azron's Call fandom page. What they do is they provide an enhancement for your character. Some of them that are available is you have the ones that affect burden and pack slots. So you have the Might of the Seventh Meal that gives you plus 20 burden capacity. You can do that up to five times. You have Shadow of the Seventh Meal, where you get an eighth pack slot. Fused War Magic, Life Magic, Item Magic, Creature Magic, and Void Magic. All five of those are separate. Which is where you don't no longer need a foci to cast each respective type of magic. You also have the death penalty related ones where you have Clutch of the Miser, where you drop three less items upon death. I mean five less items upon death. Repeat that three times, which creates a situation where you don't have to worry about dropping items in game, really. You might still drop some pyro reels or something minor. I think, I don't know if you still drop rares or not. One of the. Well, I'm creating a. Trying to create an end game character. Usually, what I get first is the quick corner plus five experience bonus augmentation gem. What you get in Siliun from Ricard Dumalia. 
costs 4 billion experience but gives you plus 5% experience bonus on creature kills. Which helps quite a bit in leveling. And then I'll usually do the clutch of the miser times 3. So if I'm trying to, if I'm macroing to level a character up, and the macro screws up, I don't have to worry about losing my armor or weapons or other valuable items. Or worrying about keeping a bunch of, bunch of costly mana stones on me. Value my pack space a bit too much. <laughs> As you can see, it's quite full. Let's work off this by tape penalty that I've had for who knows how long. Uh, after a PvP death against Megasaurus. So the other ones you have, you have the health, armor, and regeneration ones. You have innate attributes. You can get use up to ten up to ten times across all of these. So like with this character, it's a gimp build. It's a ten strength. It's a hundred strength, hundred cord. 100 quick with 10 focus, 10 self, and 10 endurance. Which means when you start out, you start out with 5 health and 10 stamina. You pretty much have to get buffed at the very start of the game. But on Megasaurus, what I've done is she has War Magic trained just for something fun to do as a casual player. I never worked off the Vitae penalty. But she started with a Gimp build as well for. It was for heavy weapon dual wield. So I've been getting a bunch of focus. Focus augmentations to help with that. So even though she is not going to have end game level war magic, she can do, still do some fairly high level quests and then play around in PvP, maybe fighting if it's a PvP battle versus somebody that's also in melee, you won't be expecting the expecting some type of war magic spell being cast in their direction. You might be able to catch them off guard. What else do you have? You have innate resistances. You get up to two across all these. You have one that's a plus ten to bludgeoning, then slashing, piercing, electric, fire, cold, and acid. And all, these all depend on what you're doing in game. I think I got electric and fire on this character, I believe. Which I use for kind of helping out with leveling up in dark design. So here we are at Cerebellus. I'm going to try to cast a war magic spell on him to lower his resistance to lightning. It's more likely going to fail, upset him, and he'll come over here and come over here and start fighting, but we'll do it anyway. We need to find it. I should have had it ready on the toolbar. So, he had Styrian's gift. Go ahead and cast it on the Cerebellus. I need to get my character on Cold Eve leveled up to a point where he can do this because I heard that Bells is quite the battle. And if I fought him, as this video is going to show, if I were to fight the Cold Eve Bells like this, I would have been dead quite quickly. So as you see, I only put a weapon in the offhand and forgot to in the onhand. And I'm going to run around like a fool and then realize, oh, I didn't arm my weapon in the main slot. Here we go. This level on Relic Dawn. Reef pulling a lot of the other GDL servers. It's the same thing. And Bellus isn't all that tough at a higher level. Here we are. We're just going to poke him for a while. Poke, poke, poke. I might have to heal at some point. Poke, poke, poke. But yeah, the other augmentations you can get. Here's critical protection, which is 25 negation of critical hits against against NPCs, and then 5% against actual players. You have frenzy of the slayer, which is damage rating increase of three, increases all damage you do with any attack. 
You have Iron Skin is Invincible, a damage reduction rating of 3, which reduces all damage you take. You have either Remorseless, 1% increased chance of a critical hit. And Hand of the Remorseless, critical damage rating of 3, which increases damage of all critical hits. You have the Salvaging and Tinkering ones. Sandra's Fortune, which gives you 25% extra salvage material. Charm Smith, which gives a 5% increase in chance of imbue. Yeah. Javril's Essence, which specializes armor tinkering. Yoshi's Essence, which specializes item tinkering, which isn't terribly useful in game. Yeah, I'm sure there's something that's useful for. In, but you have Cell Decess Essence, which specializes magic item tinkering. You have Koga's Essence, which specializes weapon tinkering. And Siandra's Essence, which specializes salvaging. You also have some skill augmentations. You have Master of the Steel Circle. So your effective melee skill when using any melee weapon is increased by 10. Master of the Fivefold Path. Your effective magic skill casting spell is increased by plus 10. Which is one I'll get for, definitely get for Megasaurus. Yeah, Master of the Focused Eye. Effective missile skill when using any missile weapon is increased by 10. And Jack of All Trades. Using this gem will gain an extra 5 points to all your skills. Be sure to read the gem's inscription for further details on its usage. So a lot of characters will come with one of those by default. You also have the Archmage's Endurance, which you can get 5 times, which is 20, plus 20% 20 spell duration increase, which is how you'll get certain buff bots that can give you 2 hour buffs instead of the standard 1 hour. So that's pretty much all the, all the augmentation gems you can get. And still fighting Velus. Go ahead and loot him. See all 20 of those augmentation gems. And obviously only pick up one at a time. But read the inscription. And the rest of it's just garbage. You got a scroll of leadership mastery other six, which is useless. And what else do we have here? A black garnet ring that casts some level four and five spells that are useless. Some level armor level 206 leggings with two level sixes and a level five, and a light weapon here the 250 light weapon. And with this game, you have randomized loot, so you can have about and no, no two people are gonna have the same exact weapon. I, I guess it, it's within the realm of possibility, but it's highly unlikely. Like one person might have a. Perhaps their weapon has. I don't know, epic blood drinker and certain set of attack skill, defense skill, etc. With all the different variables involved, it's unlikely you're going to have two of the exact same weapon. And the whole rendered weapon thing made. The Atlan weapon mostly obsolete. Unless you're playing on a server that lacks epics, or epics are very rare, then the major from the Atlan might prove to be useful, especially at a lower level. And that one with all the stones can be quite the quite a decent weapon until you're able to get rendered weapons. So yeah, in this part of the video I pulled up the community wiki on augmentations. And you know, if you want to read over some of them, you can pause during parts where I show them. Here's all the ones for the pack slots and burden. I need to get some more of those so I can free up some pack space for my main guy. Consider I 
run a lot of oddball quests and I end up with non iverable items. Now, ivory is a type of salvage that anybody can use on any item that's iverable, which allows you to drop something that's otherwise bound and attuned to you. Or you can hand it to another character, which they won't be able to use it. If it's a weapon, they won't be able to wield it. However, if they have to turn in a certain item for a quest, and you iverable, it's iverable, you can use ivory on it. Hand it to the other character, and that character can go turn it and get the quest experience for turning that item in. Just how parts of the facility hub work. We have people that have all the items in a pack. Yes, hand them all in for quick leveling. I do think it's rather a shame that people skip all the lower level quests. It's a lot of interesting lore in those. The combat isn't interesting at all, but there's a lot of interesting lore and places to explore in some of those 1 to 20 level quests. And you always get Rada's necklace, which gives you a Causes a bunch of butterflies to fly around you. And you can annoy people in the marketplace and other crowded areas with that. We're going to find out where the augmentation trainers we want. We're going to get the two critical. We're going to get the... I think we'll get the iron of the Remorseless in hand of Remorseless. Given we have two blank gems at the moment. Go ahead and get the coordinates. Looks like the two of them are in the same building, or at least right next to each other if outside. So we'll go ahead and make a trip there. Gotta make a trip to Iambicur. Which luckily, what they have portal bots here on Relic Dawn. Make it quite easy to travel to Iambicur. Otherwise, if you're on a point out a server where it's not easy to get to a portal bot, or you just want to play the game solo and not have to rely on people. You can always use one either your you can use one of your lifestone ties for I am Bakur. So we'll kinda of go through the skills here. We have specialized arcane or heavy weapons and melee defense. This guy has dual wield Three schools of magic, the creature, item, and life. Armor and weapon and item tinker, I believe. He has a stand, jump, run, salvaging, all of that that everybody has. And then the missile and magic defense are trained. Missile, missile defense is a rather, can be a rather controversial one. Some people say it doesn't really make a difference. I do a lot of Lugan quests, and it seems to make at least enough of a difference at a lower level to have that trained. If you're running out of Lugan quests where they're throwing hollow rocks at you. So here we go through the portal to Iambicur. Now I have done the run across the northern land bridge through the Direlands to get to Iambicur. As well as the run from Iron Bakur to Weathered Beach. Actually quite an enjoyable run. Just turn auto run on, stop to visit some of the sites. Have a game with over five hundred square miles of open space and people hang out in the same same five areas, it seems. But but I, I understand if when you played a game for twenty years You've already seen most of what there is to offer. And the game kind of forces you to power level to be relevant. Here we go. Oh, that looks like the person in the picture. Here we go. I've discovered a attack technique that will increase the chance of your attack hitting a critical location. Bring me a blank augmentation gem and I will teach you my secret. I guess we'll give her the augmentation gem, which we got both of them ready in this pack. And now we have the Ivory Morseless. You'll crit 1% more often. 
Make sure you read the gem's inscription first. I don't want to hear you complain if you use the gem without being fully aware of the repercussions. We got the gem. We got another augmentation gem. We'll go ahead and use this. We have, I believe, 88 billion unassigned experience at this point. So I'm not too worried about it. Go, go ahead and use it. Yes, you get that little colorful thing around you. Oh, this person will take a one, two. Anfrian believes that his technique is superior. He may be able to land more critical hit blows, but I've discovered the true form. My form will increase the damage you deal when you hit a critical location. I can teach you how to hit critical locations harder. Feel first, but you will first have to provide me with a blank augmentation gem. And it looks like I'm running low on space. So, we'll pause for now. All right. We'll just look around the curve for a little bit, jump up here. We need to go back to the town network. I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and finish the other two quests we started the other day for the Tusk, regard, qu Tusk quest and the uh, Ricardo's blood gem. And we'll also turn the eater jaw as well. Who knows how many eater jaws I have on me. But we'll start with the eater jaw. We need to go to the third portal on the right in the annex room, which is West Watch. And it's really to the... Well, if you just run straight from the drop jump over the lifestone or run around it you'll get to who you need to turn it into how many jaws do I have on this character well, let's see we got one got two it doesn't look like there's a, looks like all together we have four so we're, we will end up getting eight MMDs and I believe 200,000 I mean 200 million experience which at this point in the game doesn't really amount to much of anything for this character. Got everything turned in. Got the MMDs together. Now it's time to turn Ricardo's Blood Gem, which I believe we have to go to East Watch for. And it's also quite the easy thing to turn in. East Watch, we're going to go all the way down. It's the very last portal on the left.
And he's just standing right out here from the drop next to the well. Give him the gem. And I forget what you actually get for this quest. I know when I tried to run this quest about three or four months ago on Reef Call, it wouldn't let me combine the three gems. I don't know if they ever fixed that or not. I think I might actually do a video where I actually, where I give away all my stuff on Reef Call and kind of, I wouldn't say kill those characters off, but retire them for an indefinite period. Nothing, nothing against the people on the Reef Call server. There's a lot of great people. But most of my time is dedicated to Relic Dawn and Cold Eve. So we got some squalid leggings. Armor level 300. Got some buffs on there as well. And put them on. They look kind of, kind of goofy, actually. So what else do we have on here? Detections are garbage. Have some level sixes, and level sevens. We do have minor slash ward on there. An arcane lore requirement of one twenty. Doesn't look like there's a level requirement, so it might be good for a lower level character. So we are able to actually take on the, the coral golems and the blood golems that are in that dungeon. Seems like if you're a solo player, by the time you're able to actually complete this quest, the item itself is of no real practical use. But I do enjoy just finding the different items, reading the lore about them, and collecting them. So you see my current leggings have epic quick, epic pierce. I, I need to do some extra work on this suit. Had a better armor suit, but I was flagged for PvP and just left myself the opening of the 120 hive. as kind of a trash can for my other tunes that were doing salvaging. Fell asleep, woke up at the lifestone, pretty much naked. So whoever did that, I hope you're enjoying the armor. No hard feelings. I, I deserved it. So what else is there to do? We gotta turn the tusks so back to the annex. We're just gonna go to the portlets to the very back in the room to the left. Uluwatenga's refuge. We're gonna go to the Tusker Island. Guess I could've used the recall spell or one of the gems. But we'll show you how to get there. So town network. Annex room. Ulatanga's revenge. Now at the drop, you see a series of houses that are elevated. It's going to be the one all the way to the right from the drop. So, looks like my buffs expired. No big deal. There's nothing on this island that's really much of an issue. So let's go turn in this tusk. Oh look, it's Mayor, Mayor Coco. Let's go talk to Mayor Coco. What's he have to say? What's Mayor Coco have to say? At least that's, like I said, I'm recording this after the fact. I thought I talked to Mayor Coco. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here. I guess I'm just running around trying to figure out what I'm about to do. Oh, there we go. Now we'll go talk to Mayor Coco. Me like Nanners. Something about the Bobo King. Me watch village. So we'll go here. Tell us all the way to the right. We'll talk to Bright Eyes the Tailor. And like I said, if you're say you're running into town for one of the Tusker dungeons, which nobody really does anymore, but let's say you were. Yeah, like I said, it's one all the way to the right over here. It's all the way to the west. Furthest west one you can go to. 
go ahead and hand him. He's going to hand you a title token, a gem, and give you two and a half million experience, which is basically nothing at this point in the game for me. Give him back the title token so that's not taking up space. I'll probably use that gem at some point just to save having to get the wand out. So we completed the Tusker Guard quest. We completed Ricardo's Blood Gem, the Insatiable Eater Jaw, and Sir Bella's Augmentation Gem. and got two critical protection. There, let's throw some garbage on the ground. I had a scroll that I don't need. And most people actually spend the money to get all their level 7s and other spells in Arwick from the professors. But you can actually go through the game and collect all the scrolls and learn them that way without having to pay. The grind for that's going to be quite difficult. So what else is there to do? Do I log now? Do I run someplace crazy? I think I'm just going to and kind of see what, how the village looks. It's one of my favorite islands in the game for old time's sake. So, we'll go ahead and just, I think we'll just run north. Run north. Find a place to go up the mountain. They do have a plug-in for unclimbable slopes. They actually make the ones you can't climb red. But I, don't, I don't really like using plugins like that. It kind of breaks the immersion a bit. But I actually never ran this way. Never had a reason to. Looks like there's some type of volcano. Remnants of something up here, but we'll see. And we're going to demonstrate how ridiculous the jumping is on Azeron's call. See how far down that is. Do I find a place to run down? That's too much work. So we'll just... Oh look, I found a place to go down a little bit. We're just going to jump. There we go. Survive the jump with minimal damage. Oh look, looks like there's another quest down here. Talk to him. Thrills, chills, spills. Just need to go through this portal. Get to fight some scary Tuskers. And check out some Imperial architecture. Let's let's see where we gotta go. Oh look, it's an actual I think it's an actual hole in the ground, it's not a portal. Yep, right over here. Never ran this dungeon before, I think we'll just do a run through. Not sure what type of tuskers are in here, but given the given that it's in close vicinity to the Tusker village, it's probably gonna yep, it's what is that, a redeemer? Perhaps some liberators. Maybe slaves and guards. We'll just keep running. Just keep on running. Keep on running. Dead end again, got a bunch of upset Tuskers. But yeah, at this point, you're just going to watch me run through this dungeon. And I'll eventually log out. So if you're just listening to this, that's it for tonight. You can watch me continue running through this. I'll probably finish it the next time. If anybody has a certain quest they want to see me run, oh look, it's a Tusker minion, one of their human helpers. They have magic. But yeah, the... If anyone wants to see a run-through of a specific quest, just let me know in the comments. Or I'm on Discord. Or you can find me in-game. 
is C H K N E A E G G chicken egg and then the Roman numeral one the space between those two so C H K N E G G space I or Megasaurus or perhaps some variants here's I'm going to log now hope you enjoy the video I am working on getting somebody to help me produce videos I know I do pause a lot but get somebody to help produce the videos get these looking more professional and really show people what classic gaming is about and what modern gamers are missing out with a lot of stuff that is done for them with the press of a button and the worlds are quite confined and you get an MMO yet there's no reason to interact with other people this game forces and you, you can solo everything and create multiple characters and have all the skills covered but really there's a lot of content where it's just not feasible to do it solo anyways enjoy the video have a great night and I am out <laughs>